this is probably going to be the most important product research video which you're ever going to see. Most people on YouTube are talking about where to find winning products and all these things. It doesn't matter. In reality, it's very easy to do product research. You just make a list of 100 products. To find 100 products is the easiest thing in the world. The question is, which one is good and which one is bad? Which one should you test? Which one you shouldn't? Where should you actually spend your time on testing? And this is a question which is only going to be answered by what is a good product? What criteria does a product have to fulfill to make it good? And this is exactly what I'm going to answer in this video. I mean, just looking at this product, you can tell how amazing the virality factor is, right? This was a great product, and especially if you go viral in the right audience, this is gonna be super high converting. Because for example, if you go viral in the audience of like dads who are using all these tools and love Marvel, you're gonna crush. To be honest, that's pretty difficult to actually achieve that to only go viral in that niche. And in a lot of the cases, this is actually gonna be not converting because of that. However, this is a product which is gonna make it so much easier to go viral. You literally show the product and that's all. That's what makes the product cool. All right, so this one is kind of out there, but usually using like fake cum like this is gonna be super bad for controversy because obviously it goes viral for the completely wrong reason. However, here it actually makes sense because this is what the product is designed for and it actually is in some sort of way problem solving. So it's obviously very easy to make super viral content with this and it actually can convert because it just makes sense. And keep in mind the criteria I'm talking about here, only extreme virality. We're gonna talk about a bunch of other criteria soon, but this is the very first one. This hands you content controversy. People are going to comment a bunch of weird things and it also gives so much room for jokes. So it just goes viral because of all the comments which spike attention. And this is the fundamental of everything. Comments are OP. Comments are the most powerful thing you can even imagine because people stop scrolling and they read the comments and in the background the video keeps playing and keeps playing and keeps playing and the watch time literally goes to like three, four hundred percent because of that for these people. Now let me show you a product with extreme virality which still sucks. So again, this might seem like an amazing product because it seems really cool and it's very easy to go viral with this and people want to share it and show it to their friends and it seems like a cool idea, but people don't really want this. Like this product by itself is nothing which you actually would buy. And this makes it trash because that is what matters in the end. If you go viral and have 100 million views, but nobody wants your products, what did you do it for in the end of the day? But now let me show you the exact opposite of a product which people just want to buy. Now this is a very different thing. The product itself is super cool for women and they actually would genuinely want this because it's super useful. And because it's so broad, it is very scalable. There are some products which have a cap. And if you have a product which is in a very specific tiny niche, it has a cap much lower than this. This is not something which specific women want. Most women are using makeup, so most of them want this. Now the next criteria is can you actually film videos for this product? There are a lot of products which have a prerequisite of something to even be able to film it. For example, this one. You need a cat. Meaning that number one, if you have a cat, you already cut out 99% of your competition because most of the guys don't have cats. And if you don't have a cat, don't even get the idea of trying this. This is something which you need to keep in mind while doing product research. The same thing was for the women product. If you don't want to put on fake nails and stuff, you need a girl to film the makeup bag. So for this product, obviously, you need to play the guitar. If you can play the guitar, again, advantage. If you cannot play the guitar, just don't get started with it. It doesn't make sense. Now, let me get into a thing which causes a lot of issues. And 
it's showcase product. Showcase products are something like this toy here. If this video didn't go viral, and the next video didn't go viral, and the next one didn't go viral, what do you do? How can you make better content for this, right? Well, the only thing you can really do here is just show it. Now, don't get me wrong, there are ways how to go into other locations and stuff like that, and you can think of plots, but in reality, this only goes viral because you show the product. You show the product, and that's basically it. If you don't go viral in the first couple of videos, it's very difficult to come up with new ideas. So think about this. The same thing goes for the makeup bag with the lights. You just show it and what now? That's it. Like nothing more to do. All right, so just to summarize everything. Number one is the product has to have extreme virality. Number two is people actually have to want the product. They should want to buy it. And number three is you will be able to film content with this, especially on a longer time frame. Not only three, four videos and then you run out of ideas, but it has to be you being able to film a bunch of videos consistently and having all the tools to do so. So if it's a cat product, you need a cat. Now, there are a couple of way more nuanced criteria as well, which we're using in our program to evaluate our students' products, but we can only do that because we have such a big overview over everybody. We see hundreds and hundreds of products product every single day. We know what's good, what's working, what's not. And that allows us to have other criteria, which will be impractical for you just watching this video. If you're doing things by yourself, those three things I just gave you should be the main factors on deciding if you should test the product or not. Things like when is a product saturated and when it's not, and all these more nuanced things are basically impossible to tell if you don't have the overview, which we have. And that's one of the reasons why people in our program have such a huge advantage over everybody else. You get information which only we have access to. We're not giving it out here on YouTube. The only place we're giving it out properly is our students. You make a list with 30 products and we look over that, tell you which one is good and which one is bad. We literally tell you, this is a winner, this is bad. Test this. And that's it. If you do exactly what we tell you, you're going to make it work, especially with the feedback loops, which we constantly will give you. Every time you post a couple of videos, we're going to look over your account, tell you what's good and what's bad, and make sure that you're going in the right direction over a long enough time period. You saw all the case studies. At this point, it's undeniable that the strategy works. So if you actually want to start, click the link below and I will talk to you soon.